From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, and welcome to another Ropecast, the podcast about English and English speaking countries. I'm Roger Charlton, and my colleague Peter is not here today, but I have a guest from the United States. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Who is a colleague of mine, too. The topic today is one that came up in Germany recently, and in German they refer to a Frauenquote, which would be a quota for women. And that refers to something that we would call affirmative action in English. Now, I don't have much experience of that in the United Kingdom, so I thought let's invite someone from the US who can tell us about affirmative action over there, where there is a lot of experience with it, I think, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, what um, groups in society would be considered suitable for affirmative action, as it were? Um, well, affirmative action was developed for minorities, um, which for us is generally um, African Americans and Latinos. Um, and surprisingly, women are also included in the minority, which I've always found interesting given that we're 50% of the population. But affirmative action was really um, built for these groups to make sure that they were equally represented in the workplace and had a decent shot at getting jobs in the workplace, I believe um, federal jobs, government jobs mostly, yeah. and also getting into public universities. Was there a lot of resistance to this? Um, I think I think there was. I think many people were concerned about what they would call um, reverse discrimination, and I think people were worried that people who are not very qualified would, you know, get these jobs or be. Um, Welcome to university. Um, but some of a little research that I did indicated that that wasn't so much the case. Um, the way affirmative action is supposed to work is that if you have two equally qualified candidates, that you would then choose the minority candidate, be that a woman, an African American, or a Latino. How did women feel about treat, being treated as a minority? That's interesting. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, and maybe they were not referring to women as minorities as such, but maybe um, as disadvantaged people, right. um, you know, for university admissions and, and jobs. And I suspect that women probably would have agreed, yes, they were disadvantaged. Yes. And what about the, the results of this? Uh, has it made a significant difference? It, it has. Um, and I told you earlier about the quote that I read that affirmative action works, we don't need it anymore. And affirmative action doesn't work, we don't need it anymore. And what I've been reading about is that affirmative action does really work. Um, I looked at some figures on college admissions in California and Florida. And when affirmative action was in place, admissions for minority candidates, African Americans and Latinos, were, were good and they were representative of the population. So so, for example, if, you know, these minorities made up 20% of the population, they also made up 20% of the student body. Right. Then they argued, well, affirmative action works. We don't need to do this anymore. And they got rid of affirmative action as such and replaced it with other programs. Um, I, I'm kind of vague on what the details of these other programs were, but I think they said something like, you know, people are treated equally. We'll just look for, you know, these kinds of test scores and whatever. And they implemented that system. This was catastrophic for minority applicants. Um, people accepted to university fell dramatically because they couldn't meet these new um, policy standards. They didn't even have the opportunity to meet these standards. Um, I think... One of the things was, you know, you had to have a grade point average of above a four. A four is, is almost perfect for most school systems. And you had to have a, a grade point average or GPA of about four to get into university. Um, and if you do college prep classes, you can have a max GPA of five. They right. give you extra points. And the problem is that many minorities are not going to schools where there are these college prep classes. They cannot possibly get a GPA above a four. So they are disadvantaged in this way. And this is something that the new programs did not take into account, that affirmative action was kind of covering. Um, so it appears to me that affirmative action was um, very good in um, expanding involvement. And, you know, uh, people have argued that it's an imperfect solution to a problem, but, but, it, but it's the best thing that people could come up with, um, better than some other policies. And has this 
made a significant difference in the wider society. Once people have been able to get through college and university and gain a degree, hopefully that has an impact on the wider society. Yeah, um, I, w I would certainly hope so that, you know, when you're at university and you're, you have experiences with different groups of people and you see their capabilities, that that does also carry into life in the workplace. Um, surprisingly, though, women are still paid much less than men, right. um, and minorities are also paid less than white men. Right. Um, and, and that's surprising, given that affirmative action has been in place for, I think, about 30-some years now. Right. Um, so in terms of impact on the wider society, I think, yes, there's a certain acceptance that, like, there are working mothers, although recently there has been some very interesting comments about working mothers. There are minorities in the workplace in a very, like, in a large level of, of positions, um, but full equality is not there yet. Okay, well, thank you very much for this mm -hmm. conversation. And that right, winds up this podcast for today. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.